Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be 10 areas of your house that you can go through and declutter today. So some of these areas are going to seem a little bit broad and this is actually a lot to digest in one video, but you don't have to be perfect or do it all in one day. These are just 10 areas that when I decluttered, they made quite a big difference for me and I would invite you to take a look at your specific areas at home and see if it might help you to do a little bit of decluttering in that area as well. So maybe this video is something you can listen to while you go around and declutter or organize and if you're new here I would love if you would consider subscribing my name is Alithia and on this channel I do focus a lot on simple living but also balanced with beautiful things and basically living a clutter-free life but still enjoying things that we really love so without further ado let's get started in today's video Okay, so the first area that you can go through and declutter is your skincare. So for me personally, I found that this made a huge difference because for me, I had a lot of things on board in my skincare and not only couldn't I tell what was actually working, but also my skin wasn't its happiest. And if I ever did experience any kind of irritation or sensitivity, it was really hard to tell why that was. Was it because of my retinoid or was it because of some other active ingredient I had on the go? So in an effort to not only simplify my routine, and just make things easier and more user-friendly but also to save a little bit of money going forward and to salvage my skin and make sure my skin could be the best it could be I went through and I decluttered and basically got rid of anything that was not essential and I only kept the skincare ingredients that I knew were actually doing something for my skin so I kept my vitamin C and I kept my retinoid and I also kept a brightening cream because that is one of my areas that I'm trying to target um, so go through your skincare and see if there's anything that maybe is redundant maybe you've got multiples of something maybe that same ingredient is already in another item or maybe you just bought it because you saw it trending on tiktok or something and you thought that you should have it i know that in the past i have been influenced by youtube videos and sometimes instagram um so once i got this down to a more manageable number of items it was so satisfying and it also saved a lot of time in the morning and my skin is the happiest it's been in a really long time and so i just keep it really simple i have a gentle cleanser i have my favorite daytime moisturizer my nighttime moisturizer and my vitamin c serum and then just my couple of active ingredients and of course i have a lot of sunscreen as well because that's really important to me and I do have it organized on this really pretty marble tray that I got from HomeSense quite a long time ago. I just like to keep things displayed beautifully. I like things to look pretty, but at the same time being simple and functional. Having a minimalist skincare collection doesn't mean you only have two or three things and they all fit into one tiny section of your drawer. You can still kind of glorify, I guess, and celebrate and enjoy and make it a ritual of your skincare products um, even if you keep things simple and minimal it doesn't mean you have to completely get rid of everything and it doesn't mean that you can't enjoy the things that you have or make it a special part of your life the second area that you can declutter is your socks and underwear drawer i chose this as opposed to the entire dresser because it's a smaller area to focus on and i feel like all of us probably have worn out socks and underwear that we can go through and get rid of i like to replace my underwear completely usually once a year if I can help it because eventually they do get stretched out and whatnot. And for me personally, I also like to buy all the same color of socks and I try to get all the same underwear if I can help it for like day to day just because it makes things simple. And then when you do laundry, it's really easy to put things together and to fold things and find pairs and stuff like that. Also, if you find something super comfortable, why switch it up? Why get something different? So that's another tip that I have. Keep your more special, fun, fancy things for special occasions, but it just makes it so much more easy when you're organizing your drawer. I also got this really great little organizer from Amazon and this has been a game changer in terms of storing underwear and socks because now they're not just haphazardly lying in the drawer and all over the place and making a huge mess and underwear is really hard to fold or I find it cumbersome anyway so you can just kind of roll it up into little balls and stick it in these little slots it is a lot nicer and a lot easier than having to painstakingly go through and actually fold each pair of underwear so that's another tip i have for you as well is one of these little organizers also when you have just one small organizer it makes it much more likely that you're not going to go crazy buying underwear and socks you don't need because they're not going to fit in the organizer so it's going to influence you not to purchase more stuff because you know that your little organizer is already full 
The next area is makeup. So this might be harder for some people and easier for other people, or maybe you already are a minimalist when it comes to makeup and you don't have a lot. For me personally, I do like to try new things. And from time to time, I will try a new foundation or I'll get a new eyeshadow palette or I'll see a blush that is getting a lot of hype and I will want to try it for myself. But I always try to keep it down to what I need and what I will actually use. For a while there, I was actually kind of collecting makeup and I found that I really wasn't happy doing that. I didn't like having so many different choices. I found it very overwhelming. And because I don't do a full face of makeup every day, when I would go to do my makeup, I didn't know like what blush should I be using, what bronzer should I use? And I never really got into a good routine. So once I figured out what makeup actually worked the best for me and I ended up loving the result every time. Those were the makeup items I decided to keep. I wanted to make it super easy and super simple, even so that when I was packing my bag to go away on the weekend or for a vacation, it would be very simple to figure out what blush was I gonna bring, what bronzer was I gonna bring, what foundation was I gonna bring. And of course, things do go bad and mascaras of course have a time limit as for how long you can use them. So it just makes sense not to keep too many multiples on hand. So for me personally, what I did was I actually made it a project to make all of my makeup fit into one makeup bag. So that's another tip that I have for you if you're struggling to decide how much makeup to keep, provided you are not a makeup artist or you don't have a makeup YouTube channel or something, in that case you might need more. Or if you're just a makeup enthusiast, if you just like collecting makeup and that's your thing and that makes you happy. But for most of us, we don't need huge collections of makeup. So I would invite you to get yourself a little makeup bag or take the one that you already have and make it a little project to see if you can minimize your makeup so that it all fits into one bag. See if you can pick only one or two foundations, one or two blushes, and just minimize it to the point that it kind of all fits in one place and you can get rid of all of your organizers and your storage containers and things like that. When I did this, it was so nice and such a weight off of my shoulders, it felt like, because it just made getting ready in the morning so much easier when I knew what I was going to use right away. This little makeup bag I've talked about quite a few times on my channel. I got it from Amazon. It is from the brand called Ichi. I don't know what that brand is. It's just some random Amazon brand, but it is a great little bag. I'll try to link it for you. I honestly can't imagine using a normal zip top bag anymore um, now that I have this one because when you zip it open, it just opens flat and you can see everything that's in your bag and it is so handy and it's so great for travel and I love that I don't have to fish around and look for things. Everything is just at a bird's eye view when I open it up, which is awesome. The next part of your house you can go through and declutter are your coffee cups. I say this assuming that like me, you are a coffee lover. I love coffee and I at one point had a really hard time not buying new coffee cups. Every time I would see a cute coffee cup trending on Instagram, I would go searching for it on H&M Home or on Amazon. Um, if I happened to be at HomeSense or even Walmart and I saw a cute coffee cup or at my local decor stores. I just had such a hard time not buying it because I'm such a coffee enthusiast. I love coffee. But if you guys remember way back when I first started my YouTube channel, I only had one coffee cup and I loved just having one coffee cup. Of course, with time now, my daughter also likes to use coffee cups to make things like hot chocolate or tea or things like that. And sometimes I do have company over and in that case, you do need more than one coffee mug. So I found these beautiful ones at H&M Home. I've had these for quite a while. Um, I featured them so many times on Instagram and also here on my YouTube channel. I think they might still have them, by the way. I always get questions where these coffee cups are from and they were really affordable. So I just decided to say out with the old and in with the new. I got rid of all of my random cups that didn't really match and I just got a set of these four cups and I have two coasters to go with. In hindsight, I kind of wish I would have got four coasters, but I have another set of coasters that I like to use, so I don't really need them. And not only does it save on the amount of dishes I have to do, I never have like 10 mugs dirty at one time. There's only ever a couple of them because I only have a few of them, but also it's very aesthetically pleasing to open up your cupboard and see all the same colors of coffee cups. Um, I don't know if it's just part of me that I don't like to joke about OCD, but maybe I do have a little bit of like an obsessive part of me that loves things to look 
the same and streamlined and aesthetically pleasing, but I really love when I open up my cupboard and everything looks clean and fresh and like everything kind of matches as opposed to what I used to have way back in the day when I would open up my cupboard and there would be like 20 coffee mugs. And again, if this is your thing, if that's the thing that you collect and that's what brings you happiness, then keep all the coffee mugs. But for me personally, I found so much joy in just minimizing and only having these four. The next area you can go through into clutter is your hair products. So if you're anything like me, again, as much as I like to keep things decluttered and simple and minimized, I also love trying new things, which I've spoken about many times in other videos. Um, I think that people assume that when you want to minimize things or live a more simple minimized life it means that you shouldn't shop anymore and that is not the case at all obviously we are always going to want to try new things we're always going to hear about something bigger and better maybe something quits working for us maybe we find we're not reaching for it as much or if you're like me and you just like girly things you know you like makeup you like hair products you like um shoes or whatever there's always going to be something that catches your eye i think it's very healthy and very normal to try new things so when it comes to hair products i love trying new hair products i have sort of figured out what some of my favorites are in my holy grails but as a whole i still like to try new things um so going through your hair products and just asking yourself is there something in here that you never use maybe you can pass it on to a friend or family member or donate it or is it something that doesn't really work for you or it's really not your favorite hairspray, you much prefer this other hairspray um, or something like that. Or maybe you somehow accumulated like 20 shampoos. I've been there. <laughs> maybe you can go through and decide you can give some to friends or family or give one to one of your kids instead of buying them a new bottle next time. Or maybe you've got full bottles that have been sitting there and you don't think you're going to use them so you can pass them on to somebody else. One thing I like to do if I'm starting to get to the bottom of my shampoos and I'm trying to just kind of clean things up, I will just dump what's left of one bottle into my remaining bottle and that way I just can get rid of one bottle altogether. If it's a good shampoo and both of them are good shampoos, it's probably not the end of the world to mix them together and just use them. Shampoo is shampoo for the most part. The next area is perfume. Now this probably won't apply to all people because not everybody watching this maybe is a perfume lover or enthusiast. Maybe you don't even own a perfume or maybe you are like most people and you only have one or two perfumes already. But for me, I went down the perfume rabbit hole about four years ago when the pandemic started. I started trying out new perfumes and buying new perfumes and collecting and I actually started reviewing perfumes on my channel which I found I was actually pretty good at and it was a really good pastime and I really enjoyed it. Um, but with that eventually things just got completely out of hand between my own purchasing and being gifted from companies. It really caused me so much stress and so much anxiety and I just had so many perfumes and it just became like an obsession and a really bad shopping habit as well, which thankfully I have conquered. I have gotten over that and I no longer have this kind of insatiable urge to always have to try the newest perfume releases. So I have gotten my perfumes down to technically there's five sitting on my shelf at the moment, but one of them I'm also contemplating getting rid of. I went down from 40 perfumes down to 20 perfumes, finally down to about 13 perfumes, finally down to 10 perfumes, then down to five perfumes, and now I'm at well, technically still five, but in my head, I'm at four because there's one that I'm probably going to part ways with. I won't talk about that in today's video. Um, but you know, I have to say that the more I declutter, the easier it is to declutter. And it's always hard at first when you are used to having so many of something, it's always daunting or difficult to get rid of something. But the more that you do it, the more that you let go, each time you revisit that area, you find that first of all, you don't miss what you got rid of. And secondly, you're able to let go of even more. I'm loving the idea more and more of having a signature scent. And there's truthfully just a few perfumes, like two or three perfumes that I wear all the time. So why have so many more? Like, I just don't know. I don't see the need to have so many more. This isn't to say that one day I might not want a large collection again, or a not a large, but like a bigger collection. One day I might want 10 again. One day I might be okay with 15 again. Like who knows down the road? Um, it really just depends on where things go for me. But right now at this point in my life, I feel very happy having fewer and I don't wear perfume every single day either. So it makes sense for me. So that's one area. If you are a perfume wearer or you have body mist, take a look and see, are there 
perfumes that you really hardly ever reach for or they're just collecting dust or going bad and maybe you can give them to friends or family members which is what I usually do. The next area that you can go through and declutter is your jewelry. If you're anything like me, you probably have one or two rings that you reach for on repeat and one or two bracelets that are your favorite. I used to have a bit of a larger collection, not super big, but I just had a lot of bracelets that were sitting there that I thought, you know, I don't really wear this one that often. And what I wanted to do more than anything, I just really desired having a smaller collection. So I actually went through and anything that wasn't a favorite, I just passed on. I just gave it away and I only kept my absolute favorite things. Because the truth is, I don't wear jewelry every single day either. I wear jewelry only if it's like a special occasion, if I'm going out for dinner, if I wanna dress up and put myself together really nicely, and that's not every single day. So I don't feel that I need you know, 10 or 20 different things to choose from. What I want is like sort of a stack of bracelets to choose from and maybe two or three rings and a couple pairs of earrings and maybe you know two necklaces I really don't need much more than that so unless something is gifted to me like I have a few presents from my boyfriend um, from Tiffany's and stuff like that obviously I'm not going to declutter those I love them and they're special um, and they mark certain events in my life and so those are meaningful or if something's gifted to me from my mother you know um, like my grandmother's wedding band I keep that in a keepsake box but as for like other jewelry that I might purchase myself from like Zara or wherever the case may be. Um, I just didn't feel the need to hold on to all of it. I really just had my favorites. I knew what my vibe was. I knew what look I was going for. And I also really love pearls as I've talked about many, many times before. So as you can see, I have a lot of pearls <laughs> and I just have a few watches and you know, I have a couple more high-end pieces, but for the most part, a lot of them are just more affordable, like Amazon type things or um, like dupes of higher end products. And those are the ones I'm happy with. So I would invite you to go through your jewelry and see if you can, even just for fun, make two piles, one pile of the ones you love and wear all the time. And one pile of the ones you don't love that much and don't wear all the time. And then ask yourself if you can part ways with the other stuff. The next area, and this is a little bit more broad and it might take more time, especially if you already have a lot of knickknacks, but this is random knickknacks or random decor that just sits around and clutters, but isn't really bringing you much happiness or joy. And in fact, it might be detracting from your happiness because it's causing a lot of mental clutter. Mental clutter is when you look around and you have to process a ton of things. So for example, if you have a cluttered kitchen counter, or if you have a whole bunch of random little things sitting on your entryway table instead of having it be clean and organized. If you have a coffee table in the living room that just has become a catching place for tons of random junk or cords or something like that, that all causes mental clutter because as much as you might not realize it, whenever your eye spans the room and you look around the room, your brain processes that, you see all of that. And sometimes you get a little bit tuned out or you become desensitized to it. For me, because I've been living this kind of lifestyle for so long and I've been loving this clutter-free lifestyle for so long, I'm really sensitive to that kind of stuff. So I notice if something is really out of place or I notice if there's too much clutter or for example, if there's like a bill sitting on the counter, I will notice it and I'll be like, oh, I should really pay that bill because I'm tired of looking at it. So I like things to just be kept really clean and organized. The more that you get used to having clean counters and clean spaces without a bunch of random knickknacks lying around, the better you feel. And I promise you, it just makes your house feel so much cleaner and it is cleaner and it's easier to clean. And it is just such a game changer, you guys. My rule of thumb is if you look at what you have on your dresser or a shelf or an entryway table or whatever, or your kitchen counter, look at it and imagine it with one or two fewer items. Because sometimes you think you have stuff sitting out that you need or that you like, but, and it can, it can look a little bit bare when you first take things away. It's kind of hard to get used to if you're not used to it. But take away a couple items, put them away, either put them in a drawer somewhere, or if you're not ready to get rid of them, put them in a box or something, and just take a day or two with that extra space on the counter and see how you feel. I promise it's actually a game changer. So for example, if you always keep your Nutribullet out, put it away for a couple days and just see how you feel. Um, sometimes I think it's nice to keep a whole bunch of gadgets out and a whole bunch of appliances like the slow cooker or my juicer, but honestly, I much prefer the look of just a clean, open, clear countertop. 
it makes me so happy and it brings a lot of peace and it makes you feel more calm when you don't have a ton of random knickknacks around. So rule of thumb, look what you have and take away one or two items and see how you feel when you do that. Like I said, it might be a little bit hard to get used to, especially if you are somebody who has a lot of stuff around. And I promise you, it is just so much more pleasing to the eye, especially if you've got children or you've got dogs or something like that. You've got a busy lifestyle. You've got a busy job. The last thing you need is to walk home and feel overwhelmed by the amount of stuff sitting around. The next area that you can go through and do a quick little once over is your shoes. So I have done this similar to the way that I did perfumes. I used to have a much larger shoe collection. Five or six years ago, I only had a few shoes and then it kind of just exploded. So I had to go through my shoes and one week I removed a couple that I didn't think I really needed. Kind of had to do it gradually because especially if you have any kind of attachment to things like handbags, shoes, or whatever, it can be really hard or perfumes. It can be really hard to just get rid of a lot of it. But even though you know you really don't need that much and you don't wear as much as you have. Um, so it was a slow and gradual process with my shoes as well. But I'm very happy to say now that I only have this one, one shoe rack in my closet that has shoes on it. I used to have an over the door shoe organizer as well. And it was just a lot. And I didn't like when I opened my closet doors, not only did I have a shoe rack, but I also had an entire shoe organizer over the back of the door. It just felt excessive. And I really wanted to just, again, focus on what was my favorite, what items made me feel my best, what items did I wear the most, and those were the items I wanted to keep and pass on everything else. I also had sneakers that maybe didn't suit me as much. I had some high heels I wasn't reaching for, even though I thought they were really nice staples. I knew I wasn't wearing them. So go through your shoes and ask yourself, is there anything you're holding on to for the wrong reasons? Like you think it's a staple that you should have, but really you never wear them. Or maybe they're just not your style anymore. Or maybe they're just too high for you. Or maybe as much as you love them, you've literally not put them on since the day you got them. I actually have a couple pairs of shoes that are like that, that I still need to go through. I just haven't gotten there yet. Um, but it feels really good to minimize. And truth be told, when I go out for special occasions for dinners and stuff, I only have one pair of shoes I reach for all the time. And those are my Louboutins. And finally, I'm going to end with more of a broad one, but an important one and an obvious one. And this would be your wardrobe, your closet. So this is something that again, takes time. I have found, especially for me, it's one of those areas similar to perfumes and shoes that I have to sort of revisit a time or two again, because each time I go through, I find that I hold on to something. And even though I know I'm not going to use that thing, or even though I know I don't really love that thing, for some reason, I find it hard to let go of, or I hold on to things because I tell myself again, this is a staple that I should have. <laughs> you know, when you watch fashion videos on YouTube and you'll see these fashion influencers all sharing certain like wardrobe staples that they say every woman should have, for example, a stiff, structured, collared button down. Well, that's actually a very androgynous item of clothing and it might look really good on some women, but personally on me, if I wear that article of clothing, I literally look like a farmer. I just can't pull it off. Maybe I don't have the body shape or something. It looks great on some women, but my point is just because influencers tell you you need certain staples doesn't mean that they're good for you or that they're going to work for you or that you feel good in them. You know what your style is. I know what my style is. And so look through your closet and see if there's anything that you have that you don't really like or don't really wear or it doesn't really flatter you, but you're probably just holding on to it because you think you should have it. The best tip I can give you for decluttering your wardrobe is this. Remember that you only wear about 20% of your clothing 80% of the time. The other 80% of the clothing you wear about 20% of the time. So make yourself two piles of clothes. Number one is your first sweep through where you have your 20%. Put in a pile the clothing you actually wear all the time that you reach for, that you love, and then put the rest of the 80% in another pile. Once you've done that, put the 20% back in the closet or back in the dresser and then go through your 80% and ask yourself two questions with the 80%. Is this an item that I don't wear because the occasion simply hasn't come up yet, but I will need it? Or is this something I don't wear because I don't like how it looks? I don't like how it feels. It doesn't fit me. I just simply don't like the garment. I'm holding on to it for the wrong reasons. 
Or if you put that thing on, you kind of hem and haw, and then you immediately take it off and choose something different, probably from your 20%. If it's that second category of item, you can probably part ways with it. The other smaller percentage of that 80% that you don't wear often, but it's because it's an occasion item and you are going to need it for like special dinners, weddings, job interviews, or colder weather or something like that. It's an occasion piece that you do need and you will wear. You just simply don't have that occasion very often. It doesn't really make sense to get rid of that article of clothing because you're going to have to repurchase it at some point. But the other 80% or the rest of the 80% that You just don't like how it looks. It doesn't suit you. Maybe it suit you five or six years ago. Maybe it was your style. Our styles change. I even have things in my wardrobe that I know when I look at them, I'm like, I used to wear that all the time, but I haven't worn it in about six years or five years. That thing can probably go, even though in my head, I still think it's a favorite, but really I haven't worn it in like five years. So I'm really bad for doing that. I tell myself, oh, well, If I ever have an office job, I'm going to need this item, but that day may never come. And until then I'm holding on to a bunch of stuff that I don't actually wear. So as much as I feel like my closet is pretty minimal and I've done a good job, there's still always room for improvement. And that's why your wardrobe is a place you can come to time and time again. It's actually astounding. It's actually astounding when you go through and you ask yourself, is this part of my 20% or is this part of my 80%? It's mind blowing to see how little we actually use. And this is why things wear out really quickly. Just as a final um, piece of advice, if you guys find something that you really, really love and it suits you really well, or you find you're reaching for it a ton, try to get another one, try to get a second piece. Um, same color, same size, same exact item, because I can't tell you how many times I have found that like perfect staple item for myself and I have worn it to death. And that's how it always goes. That 20%, you will wear it until it is in shreds and it is stinky and it is stained and you cannot repair it. And then you won't have another one. And it's going to be a task to try to find another one. So I'm just going to leave you with those thoughts today. That is the final item in today's video is your closet. So I understand that some of these areas are a little bit broad, but maybe this got you thinking about some areas of your life that maybe you can revisit. Maybe you don't need as much as you think you do. And you'll find that once you start decluttering things, things start to get very clear. The fewer items you have, the easier it is to make decisions. The fewer items you have, the more you start to recognize what your true style is. And you start to actually have these little like epiphanies and these little moments where you might completely discover a whole new part of yourself you didn't even know existed. And you'll have an easier time putting together outfits and your life will just get easier. The amount of laundry you have to do gets easier. The amount of dishes you have to do, your skincare gets better. Everything gets better when you minimize and take away a little bit of that physical and mental clutter. So that's it for today. Thanks for being here with me, you guys. I hope to see you very soon in my next one. Bye for now. All the shadows fade away All your streets are empty lights Begin to sway